Hi there, my name is Natalie Allen. Um, I am a local photographer here in Phoenix, Arizona. And today I did a um, workshop of manual mode photography with the Blogettes team, which was super fun. And today I just wanted to go over a quick rundown of the difference between the three most important lighting components when shooting in manual mode for any DSLR digitally. If that's um, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. My personal camera that I have right here is a Canon 6D and a 35mm 1.4 aperture. And I'm gonna first start off with aperture because I think that that is one of the most important components when looking at a particular piece for either um, digital or even uh, film photography. So when I have my 35 millimeter lens with the 1.4 aperture, this means that a 1.4 aperture lets in as much light as it can. So let's say if I had a lens that was a 3.5 or a 5.6 aperture, it's gonna let in a lot lesser light than my 1.4. That's why lenses like this are unfortunately super expensive. So when we work with the camera with the 1.4 aperture, it's gonna let in a lot of light as well as simultaneously focus on one thing that you're taking a picture of. But for instance, if I were to crank that aperture even uh, higher, so let's say I crank up my aperture to 5.6, let's see what it does. It makes the shot a lot darker, but it makes it so that the entire frame is all in focus. So that's the difference between aperture. When we move over to ISO, that is, um, on this camera, it's measured up at the light meter right here, the ISO. The darker, or excuse me, the lower the ISO number, so for instance, the, the ISO on my camera that it's showing me right now is 160. So with an ISO of 160, that means that it's gonna be darker, but it's higher quality. So as you can see with these little lighting components of both the aperture and the ISO so far, they have, um, they have different compromises with the both. So, for instance, if we go back to the ISO, with the 160 ISO, it makes the frame darker, but it has really good quality. Let's say if I was in a particular situation where I needed to crank up the ISO to maybe 1,250, it lets in a lot of light into my frame, which is great, but it also decreases the quality. It, it produces a lot of grain, it makes it a little fuzzy and less clear. That's where the shutter speed comes in. The shutter speed is the third uh, most important component when working uh, in manual mode on any sort of digital DSLR. So the shutter basic, the shutter speed is basically telling you right now on my camera I have one over 200, which means that the shutter speed is gonna be open for one 200, 200 of a second. That means, that probably doesn't really mean anything as far as numbers, it's kind of complicated when you think of it that way, but Let's say I had my shutter speed open one fourth, okay? Um, one fourth. You see how that sounded super slow and it let in a lot of light into my frame. When you have a shutter speed of one over, a one over four, you are basically opening up that shutter in the camera to let in light for one quarters, quarters of a second. And that is, a pretty long amount of time. For an instance where you wanted to have the shutter speed only open up very quickly and then back out again, you only want in so much light because you've already adjusted your aperture and your ISO, you're gonna wanna crank that shutter speed way down, like maybe one over 16 hundredths of a second. And then you'll see a major difference and you'll also hear a difference as well. See that? So whenever you are doing night photography, whenever you're in low light situations, you wanna be able to crank up that shutter speed only so far as it lets in a lot of light, but not so light that if you move your camera, it'll go blurry super fast. So the relationship between the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed are all intrinsically linked, and that's important to understand whenever you're shooting in manual mode. Of course, it's gonna be super complicated. Everything, it, it, everything is very complicated, I think, when, when you break things down individually because they all 
mesh well with each other. They're all part of a triangle. And if you only focus on one part of the triangle, then you're missing the other two pieces. So it's important to just practice with your camera, do a lot of trial and error, go out with your friends, mess with the ISO, the aperture, the shutter speed, see what works best for any sort of um, particular situation that you're filming, you're shooting in because indoor lighting is going to be different than outdoor lighting and so on and so forth. So it's just important to understand your camera, to understand how your camera works, like what specific camera model you have, and you can just go from there. Thank you so much for joining me today. And again, my name is Natalie Allen.